And right now they're trying to find somebody that just go up there and hold these little crack addicted babies and rock them because they scream and they cry coming off that drug. And they see them over and over and over again. And the women come in there. One of them come the other day and she tested positive uh, for cocaine. And she said, no, man, I, I ain't taking any cocaine in a long time. But she had a, an addicted baby that was just born there. And I'm going to tell you something. That, that, old, that old thing said, like father, like son. There's more truth than that than you think there is. The terrible, irrevocable damage you've done to your family. The opposite side of that is you get saved this morning and begin to have an influence on your family for good and for God. That'll take effect too. Then I want you to notice this. Look back in your Bibles. You'll have to get used to the sounds that are around you. The, the, when you're in the darkness and you hear things, it's more terrifying than when you can see the, the source of the noise. Now, let's look at Matthew chapter 13 just a minute. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Here's one of the sounds you'll hear in hell. It will be a blood-curdling sound. It will chill you to your very soul. In Matthew chapter uh, 13, and look down at verse uh, 41. Matthew chapter 13, and in verse, uh, in verse uh, 41, he said, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them that do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. One of the things you're going to hear is the screams of the damned, the horrible beggings and cryings out and the screams of people that are, that are in torment, and there's not just one and not just two. There are thousands and millions. The Bible said hell hath enlarged herself. Neighbor, we're not talking about some little old place that the Pope can pray you out of. I'm talking about a place beneath our feet. you hear the screams of the damned forever. It'll chill your blood. You'll say, dear God, shut it up. I can't take it. I don't want to hear it anymore. There'll be other sounds too. Didn't the Bible say here that he, he cast him into a furnace of fire? The roaring of that furnace. The Bible calls hell a bottomless pit. That thing creates a draft. Have you ever heard a furnace that is burning full blast and, and the draft, you can't cut the draft down and that thing's just burning full bore? That, that hell is like that. And neighbor, you'll hear, you'll hear that fire popping and cracking. You'll hear that furnace and the screams of damn and you'll pinch yourself and say, my God, my God, this must be a nightmare. But it's reality. It's reality. You're actually there. You're living that. It's reality. That isn't all. Look at Revelation chapter 9. There are more sounds yet to come. Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9. Here's an angel that comes down during the tribulation period. In verse 1, the fifth angel sounded. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And you opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, and the smoke were a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto him was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their forehead. And look down here, please, in verse 7. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared in a battle. On their heads were the crowns like gold, and their face were the face of men that hair as the hair of women and their teeth were as the teeth of lions and their breastplates as the breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was the sound of, of, of chariots and many horses run the battle and they had tails like scorpions. Here's my question for you this morning. Where did these creatures come from? Did they come out of heaven? No. The Bible said they came out of hell. The Bible said the angel opened up the lid of hell and those horrible creatures come crawling out to torment men on this earth. Here's my question for you. If we're not in the tribulation yet, and I believe we'll soon will, that thing will happen as soon as the Lord comes and gets us out of here. If they're not there, where are those creatures this morning? They're in hell. And if you die and go to hell, you're going to be in there with them. You'll hear them crying and screaming, making their awful noises. 
running through hell with their tails like scorpions and a face like women, teeth like lions, a hair like women, face like a man, and horrible creatures. They're locusts as big as horses. And you hear those things running through hell and people screaming as they're tormented. You say, my God. My God, I'm dreaming this. Please, God, let me wake up. If you ever had a dream so bad, you'd cry out in the night, God, please let me wake up. I have. You ever dreamed somebody you love had died? And it seemed so real, you said, oh, God, please let me wake up. And by his mercy, you wake up, and it's not true. The neighbor hell's a different story. You are awake, and it is true. The scripture said here, you're going to hear all these noises. You're going to hear all these horrible things. And one last thing. Look at Proverbs 1 again. I read it a while ago. Let's look at it again. Proverbs chapter 1. There's a good chance that you're going to hear this sound. Verse 26 said, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. You may hear God laugh. You may hear... That from heaven saying you were a fool, you chose your own way. The Bible said, the Bible said we made choices in this life. And the Bible said straight is the gate and narrow is the way that lead unto life everlasting. And few there be that find it. But he said, my broad is the way that leads to destruction. Neighbor, there's two ways ahead of you. I beg you to take the Christ way this morning. I beg you to come to Jesus this morning. Your first morning in hell, your first day in hell. And that awful reality will, will, somewhere in the back of your mind, you'll say, somewhere I heard a preacher say, somewhere I heard a soul winner say, that hell is forever, and it is. You'll say, oh, God, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done to myself? I'm in a place I cannot get out. I'm in a place that I'm not going to have uh, 10 years from now or 25 years and I can walk out the front door and my debt will be paid. It's forever. What have I done? But you know what the good news out of all this is? The good news is you can start this morning having your first day of eternal life. You can have eternal life this morning. Look at John 3. John the third chapter. I want to read verse 18 and verse 36. John chapter 3. Verses 18. Verses 18 and 36. Watch this. Jesus is speaking to uh, Nicodemus, and he said, He that uh, believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. Verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. John 5 and verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah this morning. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to, neighbor. That's the good news of all that. You don't have to. There's great news today. Jesus hung and bled and died on the cross of Calvary and took your sin on him and then got up out of the grave three days and three nights later, victorious over sin, hell and death and the grave. If you trust him, he'll save you this morning. Amen. You can go to heaven. You can begin your first day of eternal life today. You said, I thought eternal life began when you died. Oh, no, your eternal life begins when you trust Christ your Savior. I have eternal life this morning. You're saved this morning. You have eternal life. I'm not waiting to get it. I got it. I'll tell you something. The greatest thing, I've done a lot of stupid things in my life, as everybody knows. Done a lot of stuff that I wish I'd never done. Let me tell you the greatest thing I've ever done in my life. As a 17-year-old boy, I received Christ as my Savior. I've never regretted it. Never, never. I stood last night by the bedside of